USB was supposed to be universal and the main goal was to make a hot swappable super easy to interface with any other device but over the years the idea went haywire there are so many variants of this USB ports which is so frustrating at times the way these works totally contradict their name just like how my channel's name has nothing to do with what i'm doing by now with the title you would have figured out we are not going to make some diy adapters instead let's build something different every usb receiver should be compatible with any usb device this might not sound right but i tried it anyway and the result is the wireless card reader this fulfills all my wishes all i have to do is just plug it inside any usb receiver it shouldn't matter which one a charger a laptop a pc or the power supply which we built in one of the previous videos as soon as you plug it in it creates an access point where we can connect then just open up any ftp client application in any device now you can copy as well as save all your files to the sd card wirelessly this might look like an clickbait worthy project and not an actual working device so to prove let's break it down into bits and pieces let me start with saying this is not a new idea these kind of wireless card readers have been there for more than 6 years and of course you need to pay a ridiculous amount of money for this whereas the regular ones could cost you just a fraction of it but this is not what gave me the idea for this project it was this video made by one of the fellow youtuber which lit the bulb over my head and i was like why not let's make a wireless card reader it shouldn't be that hard right first i thought all i have to do is some pretty easy electronics start a web server and throw in some html and css and i'll be done but i had absolutely no idea how wrong i was until i started working on it first let's see the easy part the sd card sd stands for secure digital it's similar to your pen drive but with a smaller footprint and much cheaper price when we have to use this with any of the microcontrollers there are basically two options one is sdio and spi Almost all the SD cards share many standard features and have the same physical and electrical specifications. The actual difference between the SPI and SDIO are mainly on the software level, and I really don't want to bore you with the theories. So I link up a website in the description where you can learn more on how it works. For now, let's say SDIO is faster but harder to implement, and SPI is slower but easier to implement. Since most of the microcontrollers support SPI by default, I'll just stick on to it. You can use any SD card modules. All of them have the same interface. But I was really eager to try out what he did in this video. So I grabbed the SD card adapter and cleaned the contact first. Then used some angled adapter pins and soldered directly to the adapter's contacts. Then I cut a small two-sided PCB where the SD card can fully fit in. Once that was done, I removed the black separator one by one. So when I place it back, it would be flush with the PCB. Then finally I just soldered the SD card in place. Now we need to power this. For which we'll be using the USB power port itself. So use a male USB adapter. This usually has four pins. where two are used for data lines and two more for power and ground since we just need the power i'll cut the data lines then place the male usb adapter in front of the sd card and with some fiddly adjustment we'll solder it in place but the power issue isn't actually solved yet the sd card requires 3.3 volt but the usb supply is standard 5 volt if you just plug this in your supply you will probably fry out the sd card So I used the 3.3 volt regulator and connected the input of the USB supply to 3.3 volt regulator. And finally, soldered the output of the 3.3 volt regulator and ground to the SD card. You can check out the link in the description for a more detailed circuit diagram on how the pins are connected together. This sets up the SD card and the power supply. Now to read and write the data from the SD card, I'll use the ESP12. Even though it's slower than ESP32. but it really doesn't matter which one you choose i'll tell the reason in the later part of the video place the esp12e on the back of the board and solder the spi pins of the esp12e to the spi pins on the sd card just like it shown on the circuit diagram 
and this finishes the setup for the electronics part. Before programming, I did some research on how to download and upload files. That's when I tumbled across the word FTP. Actually, FTP is a file transfer protocol and it's different from the regular HTTP that we are used to. And FTP is faster than the HTTP when transferring files. So I wanted to implement this, but I couldn't find anything that's very actively developed or specifically made for ESP8266. But with some digging, I came across David, who ported an Arduino version of the FTP server to ESP8266, but with the SIPS support, but not the SD card. And with little more effort, I found someone who did work on David's library to convert the SIPS to SD card. But when I tried to use this, I faced two issues. First, the page where I found this out was in Korean. So I had to literally sit and translate everything to know what was going on. And the second problem was I had to modify the existing SD library to support the changes he made. But that felt very clumsy. So I compared both this library, one from David and the other one from this website. Then made some minor changes and made the whole thing into a single project. So there is no need to install any sort of library. In case if you guys want to check out the code, the link will be given in the description for my GitHub account. Now to upload this code, I made an adapter with a few wires and female header pins. So I can temporarily solder the ESP12E and program it using the FDTI module. You can check the cards to know more about programming the ESP8266 with FDTI module. Once it's programmed, just remove the temporary wires. Let's try it out and see how it works. Just plug this into any USB compatible device. Then download any FTP client software either for your PC or for your smartphone. For this demo, I'll use the AND FTP in my Android device. Connect to the access point which your USB device created. Then open the AND FTP and fill in the credential to set up the FTP client. Once that's done, you can download any files from the SD card as well as you can upload files from your phone to the SD card. But before jumping into the conclusion that it's a very handy device to have, let's take a step back. Even though it does what I want, it's utterly slow. It roughly takes 30 seconds just for 4 files. And if you try out with a larger file like 10 MB file, it will take around 3 to 4 minutes to complete. There are ways to optimize this and from the page where I referred, he was able to get roughly 450 kbps read speed. The reason why I stopped the project here and why I didn't bother trying to optimize it was because of two reasons. First reason, I really wish along with the FTP server, I could still use the USB data lines to transfer data, but it's not supported in ESP8266 or ESP32. And the second reason is that I couldn't get enough speed to transfer the files over FTP. These are also the same reason as why I didn't want to use the ESP32 instead of the 12E. But I think some of these problems can be solved and make a better version once I get my hands on the ESP32 S2 boards, which supports full speed on the go USB. Since the code isn't perfect, there are a few other projects that might be worth checking. One of which was made by G6EJD, where he implemented the whole process with just HTTP, which lets user download, delete and navigate folders which are on the same SD card. But still, it suffers with the same transfer speed. And there is one more project where the code is ported to work with ESP32 and SDMMC. So it should be much faster than using the SPI communication to read and write from the SD card. If you guys come up with any better library to use or any suggestions, I would love to hear it from you. Just comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the upcoming videos. And try sharing it to your friends who might be enjoying this kind of content. Finally, to keep up with the upcoming project and to support me making more videos, you can follow me on Instagram and also can become a member of Patreon.